Josh Shin, how do you interpret all this that we're talking about? U.S. troops are on the ground in Ukraine. I think that this has been quietly accepted amongst politicians and countries in the area based on how much money we're sending over there. There have already been reports that intelligence agents have been on the ground in Kiev to help them manage all of the intelligence that is coming in from uh, NATO and its allied governments. But uh, on the, the CIA uh, operative's point about diplomacy, I think that's one of the biggest failures of this current White House. Uh, the press, I mean, the uh, diplomats there tend to treat international affairs like a sitcom where they don't really keep in touch and do the, uh, do the groundwork that is required to, you know, keep people in line and keep people informed, right? We're seeing this with Saudi Arabia, which was reportedly this week, the Biden administration was trying to work out a secret deal to keep uh, oil prices low. And um, the Saudi Arabia threw them under the bus after as uh, their relations between uh, their crown prince and Biden, who has been ignoring him for the past year, past two years, um, it, it melted down. So this is just another failure of this current administration's diplomatic protocols. And I think that it's a real letdown for, um, to his voters. I feel bad for the Democrats and I guess the swing voters who in 2020 thought that he would bring normalcy back to the White House. But it was just, everything has just tumbled back into disorder. Um, Josh Shin, how much will the president's foreign policy impact the November elections outcome? I honestly don't think it will affect it at all. Uh, poll over poll has shown that Americans are too worried, too stressed about their uh, being able to afford to, um, you know, feed their families and get by. There have been a lot of Democratic pundits who have been talking about, or I guess bemoaning the average voter, the average American citizen for voting with the gas prices, when in fact gas is how we live our lives. Gas is how we connect with other people, uh, run errands, get to work. Well, the majority of Americans, not the people who remote, uh, work remote in the big cities, right? These gas is, is, is an indicator because it's, use, it, it's required to help Americans make their way. So I think that based on the dire economic conditions that are facing Americans, even though the administration may be in denial of it, is going to make foreign policy issues, and especially Brittany Griner, which is, I think is one of the topics that is more a media focus than an average American one, are going to have on the midterm elections. Well, you know, uh, that's why I enjoy balance. They are all perspectives, Josh. Well, we've talked to many Democrats in Pennsylvania at the highest level, and they felt it was disastrous. And even people who were polled immediately afterwards doesn't even feel, forget about everything else, he has the capacity to even, to even serve as a U.S. Senator. I can understand everything Robert is saying about somebody's stroke, a grandmother, but should that person be in the United States Senate? No, he shouldn't. Uh, the, a public servant's role is to serve the people. It's not the citizen's role to, um, I guess, approve of or, I guess, try to make up for a candidate's faults. And I think that there's a lot about um, Mr. Fetterman's performance that raised a lot of doubts in people who are looking to him to represent them in um, the government. The reason why Fetterman doesn't have mansions is he's been living with his parents for so long, right? Like, there's only so much you can do to dress up the fact that you are a man of the working class people when you went to Harvard, when you, you know, haven't really had a real job until you got into Pennsylvania government. So it's not that Fetterman is not noble or had no choice, right? I believe that he had to take the debate. We've seen in Arizona that uh, the Democrat there, Katie Hobbs, has fallen to a double-digit double deficit uh, in part which because she turned out a debate with the uh, Trump-endorsed nominee. So I don't think once he won the primary, Fetterman had a choice to enter the debate. But I think that there are lots of people who watched and 
felt really sorry for Mr. Fetterman, not because of his ailment, but for the people who let him get there. His wife, that many have pointed to for, I guess, pushing him to that point. The press that covered up for um, his ailments and, uh, I guess, roasted that one reporter for honestly reporting that he was struggling uh, in, to have normal conversations. It's not the voters' job to feel sorry for our candidates. It's, our, it's the voters' job to pick who will represent them best, and I think that Fetterman is in a lot of trouble. You know, uh, Joshua, just on Thursday, a New York City bus was hijacked in broad daylight in New York, and police made an arrest. Uh, it seems to me that the Democrats believe that if you talk about freedom, you talk about abortion, climate change, the fact that we sing Kumbaya and welcome all the migrants and all the illegals in our country, that is the compassion that Americans are voting for. But yet, the polls and the exit polls are telling us something different. To our other guest point, there has been a, uh, a leveling out of the polls, right? So um, last week, a lot of polls showed that Republicans were very far ahead in terms of the generic congressional ballot, whereas this week that has been um, tempered a bit. They're still in the lead, but by not as much. But so to Republicans, I'd say don't get cocky. You haven't won the elections yet. But at the same time, I don't think that voters are going to forget the stress, uh, the financial stress, the danger they feel out, feel going out into public when these crimes are happening in broad daylight, right? Not only can they not afford to get to where they want to be, they have to worry about their safety. Uh, in the, and to uh, the other guest point about the polls, I think that, yes, there is some type of pushback and um, Democrats are resurging a bit or recovering at least. Gas prices are falling again and again, the polls are pretty good. But at the same time, a lot of their candidates in key races are struggling, struggling to break 48%. They don't have it. They no longer have clear majorities, and these were not supposed to be close races. For example, the fact that Zeldin is, you know, running neck and neck with Hochul, or that uh, there is a Republican in Oregon that not a lot of people are talking about, um, Christine Drazen, who has been, who's catching up. She's pulled ahead in the last at least five polls. These were not supposed to be competitive races, and I think that's because. People voted on the promise of these ideals in 2020, and they've realized that, you know, they just don't, these policies don't work. Uh, Joshua, um, Justice Thomas gave um, Senator Lindsey Graham a brief reprieve from testifying uh, before the Georgia Elections Board. Uh, but even more significant than that, where many people have been saying that Justice Thomas should recuse himself from these cases because of his wife's association with former President Donald Trump. It seems to me that Justice Thomas is, is deciding his own beat and has the media's narrative and the left screaming, recuse yourself, is having no impact on how he feels whether he should be a, a part of a case or not going forward. And also there was an article a major article in the papers this week that John Roberts may be the chief justice of the Supreme Court, but it's Justice Thomas's court. The people that are covering um, Clarence Thomas's recent judicial actions or his connections to his uh, or his wife's connections, uh, deep political connections, aren't really talking about or covering the uh, statements that liberal justices have also made in the past when um, Donald Trump was elected. Um, Ruth Gader, Bader Ginsburg made a couple of very public comments that had people worried that she would have to recuse herself from anything involving Trump. And there's also liberal justices out nowadays who do speak very forcefully about certain issues that make you worry and wonder. I think that the Georgia people have a grasp on election um, security and voter fraud based on the workings of their party, right? Their secretary of state is very popular for pushing back on Trump's uh, claims that 2020 election was stolen. And so this is more of a state issue for them. And I think that Democrats and the liberal media are kind of grasping for straws at this point.